Okay, welcome to Watercolor in 5. This is Chris Petrie here. We're going to get right into this. We're going to um, create a beautiful uh, composition here, a painting. It's going to be like an outdoors uh, style painting, a landscape. We're going to use lots of rich color, um, dark, vibrant uh, tonal values, some really bright lights. So we're going to try to use... Um, the whole gamut of uh, darks and lights in this painting so that we kind of see that we can use that full spectrum of light and darks in our painting and we in earlier um, if you were to go back into my uh, earlier uh, videos on this channel watercolor and five you'll see that I did create a, um, a video on tonal values uh, darks and lights and essentially if we can use all that range of uh, dynamic uh, uh, color and boldness it really will make our paintings look fantastic i know when i first started um, watercolor painting my paintings looked much more drab and i wasn't using the full range of uh, color and tonal value and partly the reason was i was using a dry palette and i wasn't using fresh moist paints like this so uh, i also have another video here on watercolor and five that talks about the palette a number of uh, videos if you check those out you'll you'll find out exactly how you're going to keep your palette paints nice and moist. And if you do that, you're going to get that much more dynamic looking painting, a much more pleasing, positive and beautiful painting f from using fresh, moist colors. So we're going to prove that out here. So what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to be more creative, have some fun with the colors. I'm not going to necessarily be so strict with um, what color am I going to use for the sky blue. Like I might not be as, um, You'll see I'll have more creative license here. And uh, I want you to do that too as an artist. Use some of your own creative uh, juices. Um, sometimes just play around, have fun with different colors. And, and this way you'll always be, uh, you know, expanding and learning. All right, so let's have fun here. Let's just, uh, we're going to make this simple. We always try to just lay out our, our design, a little bit of our painting. And we're going to say, if we go with thirds like so one-third two-thirds and three-thirds three divisions roughly and then we're gonna say our first third will be our um, land and water and this will be our trees and then sky so we're going to sort of divide our painting in three sections, roughly, to just have that nice pleasing effect of, of thirds as we, as we go. So, and if you, uh, just a rough general idea of the layout. It doesn't have to be perfect and we're actually, I'm doing this improv. I'm just improvising this. I'm not looking at any pictures or any um, photos or books or anything like that. And I suggest you definitely try working. Um, on your own and creating your own ideas. You can get ideas from all your typical places, books, other, D, uh, you know, um, DVDs, you watch art DVDs, YouTube videos, all these things definitely utilize everything, but it is good to practice being creative and just coming up with your own ideas as well. So let's do that here. I'm just going to say, all right, let's make the, the land like here and there's going to be some water. So I'll just make a couple lines, very light lines, just to let myself know I want to leave some water here. Maybe I'll leave that white of the paper. And then maybe we'll make an, a cropping of trees over here. And this is more in the distance, let's say, and we'll make maybe a little more water here. And we'll have some... So this is probably a cropping of trees here. And then over here, the same thing. We're gonna do some, I'm just doing some tree shapes. And what I wanted to do here was make sure that I balance the picture. So this is going to be maybe a pine tree here. So the pine trees tend to have the branches that are sort of level, they're not so much tipped like this, you know, pointed at a 45 degree angle. So just 
a little reminder, we can make a pine tree here in the, maybe more in the foreground, like here, like that. And we balance this. The, the design is balanced. We have a large tree here. And then we balance it with two good sized trees over here so it doesn't feel like the page is going to tip over like that. And that, that seems to work out good if we can keep things in balance. And that looks pretty good. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You can sometimes erase a few lines. I'm going to erase a few lines. Just like that. And we're pretty much ready to paint. So with this, we're going to let's use a, a, a flat brush. So I'm going to use a flat brush or a square brush as we call it. And I'm going to go in and get some really good middle tones. So we'll go with French ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, burnt umber, yellow ochre, maybe a little bit of lizard and crimson. Raw Sienna. I'm going to mix a little couple different colors. And we're just going to go across here like this. I'll add a little more blue as we go. Then I'm going to start working into more of the gold colors, sunset colors. Let's do that. leave a little white paper <clears throat> and then we will burn umber and French ultramarine blue let's get some darks darker darks there because this will light this will dry lighter you're gonna see this will dry quite a bit lighter and some lizard and crimson maybe a little bit of uh, orange cadmium orange So we're going with a sunset effect here. And let's load that water onto the paper and paint. And, and then we're gonna just do this too. We're gonna get some of that color in the foreground. And that should be good. We can go with that darker color. We can reflect that down in this area. Burnt Umber and French Ultramarine Blue. So we're gonna just kind of bring that, those darks down into the lower section of the painting too as well. Kind of reflecting the sky. So there's still some water down here. And we have some fun. Just as long as we kind of see we're, we're reflecting what's up here down at the bottom of our painting. And the same with the with this uh, okay now I'm gonna take a quick break for maybe five ten minutes and let this dry but you won't notice that because we're just gonna come right back and um, but we will let this dry so I'm gonna take a break 10 15 minutes I might use the blow dryer a little bit to blow dry this and then we'll come back and we'll start to put in the trees and you'll see how this really comes out really beautiful Okay, we let this paper dry a little bit, so you can kind of see it's a little bit more um, dry to the touch. And that's about where we want it, where it's a little bit damp still, but not and not completely dry. If you're newer at watercolor and you haven't been painting a long time, it's probably better to let this completely dry first before you go in and do the, tree, uh, the trees and um, finishing up this painting here with the darkest darks that we're going to do now. 
Uh, but if you've been painting it with watercolor for a couple years or so, three, four years, you're comfortable with washes and the paper and how it reacts, then you're going to be okay. You can go in while it's damp. It's a little better to paint on damp paper. The watercolor colors uh, fuse better and look better overall when you have your finished painting completed. But again, if you're newer to watercolor, painting on damp paper can sometimes be a real problem because the watercolor washes just to blossom out and go everywhere and it makes a real mess. So um, when you do this first first wash, it looks so beautiful with all the colors mixing and mingling and we have a really nice first wash going here. Um, so let's not ruin it. If you're newer at watercolor, let your paper completely dry 100% before you go in and do your darker darks. Um, so we're going to do the darker darks with um, a uh, round brush. So I'll just use my watercolor, normal, everyday watercolor brush. Round brush. Natural hair, uh, Kalinsky Sable. And this is a, uh, a Da Vinci Maestro brush, a number 10 size. And we also have a um, Alvaro Castanet uh, needlepoint brush. We'll do some fine painting with the pine trees and a couple details with uh, this brush. And we should be fine. So um, let's start to do our um, tree shapes here. So we'll make them really dark, some nice dark darks. We'll get some French ultramarine blue, sap green. Let's use that sap green in there. Burnt umber. Lots of French ultramarine blue, a little bit of cobalt blue maybe, a little bit of purple. Okay, that's a good dark dark. French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, a little bit of burnt sienna even too. And then let's start working in our tree shapes. And then over here we have this larger tree. And then here with the tree shapes, I mean we can kind of start up here and Some flicks upward with your brush tend to really tell the story of nice, beautiful trees. The, the branches uh, grow upwards toward the light. Then you can get some more shapes like that. And again, we're using our darkest darks. We'll go in and get more French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, purple, a little bit of uh, sap green. Burnt Sienna, like that. Then we're going to make some trunks of trees here. So let's do that. A couple bushes over here. Some trees in the distance, like that. Have fun with this. Some more trunks of trees here. And then we're going to have some, when we make these trees here, let's make that some water. Let's make the reflections here, little squiggly lines. Just a little bit, not too much. Like that. Okay, so we're having some fun here. And then some more darks here, some maybe bushes and weeds and things. You can have fun with this. Don't worry about getting things perfect. Just sort of get the idea of um, bushes, trees, sticks, you know, limbs. We'll do a little more detailing with our uh, needlepoint brush. We're going to leave those whites in here. Leave those whites of paper. That's the light coming through the clouds. We definitely want to leave those in. Um, more darker darks down here. Again, French ultramarine blue. If you have to get more paint uh, out of the tube, you can do that. Okay, and then I'm going to do some dark darks here. Some uh, interesting, maybe this is some water. And then we'll do another, some trees over here. Again, some flicks upwards. You can do kind of scraping downwards for trees too. That works. Leave some space in there. Notice I leave some space in between the sky and the the, tr the tree uh, leaves. I 
I'll do a little splashing, make things interesting. Some bushes, more bushes here, and some more of the trunks of the trees. We'll do those. And again, some reflections here. Those are going to go down into the water. Same here, that reflections of these, this tree cropping here. Darker, we go darker at the bottoms of the trees. So you can fill in some more darks here if you need to. That looks really good and again the reflections of the trees go in the water. And then to add some interest to the water we add some water. Let's add some water to this. Make it puddly a little bit. And then we can uh, take our, our brush, dry it off with a little bit of tissue. I rinse my brush, dry off a little bit of uh, water with the tissue. And then we could just do a couple couple water indications of water lines and reflections just like that. Just a couple like that. And that should be good. Give it that watery look. And that's really important to leave those spaces of light uh, coming through underneath the trees and in here and there through the trees. And then we're going to take our needlepoint brush. Let's use that. We'll get our, we had a pine tree we sketched in over here. That's uh, cobalt blue, sap green, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. Let's get a lot of that. French ultramarine blue. And that looks good. That's a nice kind of dark kind of pine tree look. And then we'll just do a, a couple details here. <clears throat> Again, the pine trees, the branches are sparse. They're not as full as these trees here. These are different varieties of pine trees here. We're pretending we're in the forest and we're next to a lake. Maybe we're fishing or we're in a cabin and we're just having a cup of tea or coffee just to pretend a little bit and get relaxed as we do this. And then we're going to just make a couple of those lines in the water. It doesn't have to be much, just a couple indications of those. That's all. And that's it. So we have, and we'll do another, maybe another couple thicker branches there, here and there, and maybe another and a couple more pine trees. So you can do a few pine trees and these are a little more in the distance here, a little further, further back in the, in the painting so we you know try to create that distance feeling of three three dimensional feeling so we have a couple there and we put a couple angles too a couple branches angling mostly straight the other branches and that looks pretty good and maybe a few more details of branches over here. And that's good to do. A couple, a couple detailed uh, branches and things and maybe some, uh, some other sticks and weeds and things over here too. They have a happy little place here too. And a 
Okay, that is that simple. We got that beautiful first wash in with the um, sunset sky, the blues, the purples. Then we did the oranges and the yellow and the gold colors. We left a little bit of white paper in the water areas here. So we're pretending there's some water here and we do some reflections. You can dry off the brush and do some quick, just a couple lines very simply. You can even take a tissue and make a little you can take a tissue and just make a little like um, point on it and do a couple quick like that and another thing we can do that will enhance this a little more we can try to get a really nice dark dark burnt umber French ultramarine blue burnt sienna French ultramarine blue a little purple and then maybe we'll just get a little darker horizon line here. And if we put that little dark horizon line there, that gives us a little bit of that feeling of like a shoreline in this painting. And it's like a lake here and there's some interesting things going on, but we, we want to make sure we have that shoreline there maybe. That gives us a good good feeling there. All right. And that's really our rendition of a beautiful landscape painting along a gorgeous lake. Some pine trees and interesting bushes and we're having fun here. We went through the whole process. So you have the whole process of how to start out the painting, lay out the one-third lines. And then we see we have a pleasant uh, looking painting here. And we use the uh, darkest darks for our trees and those pine trees in the center where the light is. I think it looks good. And um, it's, a, it's a more simple painting. It's not a tremendous amount of real intricate drawing or planning or all that. It's just, and we'll maybe zoom in a little bit here. And we can always, always crop things a little bit. So if you want, if you create a larger painting like this, Sometimes it's nice you can kind of trim it down and make it smaller and kind of zoom in on the your favorite parts of what you think came out the best. So I can zoom in and move it around and look at it and say, you know, what do I think looks better? You can, we can zoom in and, you know, you can make things, adjust things higher and lower. So we can make the the horizon line lower like this. Or we can move it up more like that and show more of the lake and the, the water. So that's totally up to you. Have fun with this. Again, uh, we'll be back uh, in uh, very soon on Watercolor in 5. Hope you enjoyed this, and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.